creepy and cool TikToks that will blow your mind. Are you ready? Let's go! Disclaimer. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Please do your own research, as these clips haven't been fact-checked. I want you guys to look at this image because it shows that if Trump didn't turn his head in the last millisecond to look at the chart that he was going over, the picture on the right would have happened and we would be in a very, very different place right now. America probably would have had weeks of chaos and potentially riots. I, I wouldn't even want to imagine. Trump said that the most incredible thing that happened was to not only turn my head, but to also turn it at the exact right time and in just the right amount for me to not be you know what. Wild. This is not luck. This is God's work. There's actually people out there saying it, it was all arranged. Anyone who's saying this was staged has clearly never touched a gun in their entire lives. Look, you go to a gun range, usually you're gonna be shooting from 25 yards away. This is what 25 yards looks like, keep that in mind. Experienced gunmen would get like this spread from 25 yards. At this point with that area, your, your brain is just a bullet now. So this is 25 yards, keep that in mind. And the shooter was shooting from 150, 140 yards. You're telling me, Trump was like, yo, aim for my ear from 400 feet. Aim for my ear. I think even this dude would have fucked that up. Okay, there's no way. Not even to mention the, the drop, the wind gust, which was 13 miles an hour. So yeah, uh, no way this shit was staged. He would literally have to be the best marksman on earth to be able to just graze his ear. And the guy who shot him was in the Black Rock video, but they took it down recently. I'm Amalia. Uh, sister, remember the one that kept smoking in the bathroom? Sister. Yes, yes, Amalia, yes. Are you okay? David, could I see you for a second? No. Yes. I hope you're not holding my smoking against me, sister. I don't smoke anymore. No, no, Amalia. It's just a spiritual matter. We'll be right back. There's a demon in there. There's, what does that mean? It means there's a demon in there between them. It has its hands on their shoulders. I didn't see anything. Because you're not as good. Look at your feet. What do you see? My feet. No. There's a trail of slime here, like a snail. Are you sure? Don't patronize me. What do you want me to do? I want you to find out what the issue is. There's something possessed in their marriage. You've only been married a week. It doesn't matter if it's an hour. Find out what the issue is. And if there's nothing? Then I'm wrong, Father. And I should just clean up your room. Hi, uh, Sister Andrew's here to take notes. Uh, she's a valuable consultant on uh, marital issues. I don't think we really have any marital issues. We were just joking about our in-laws. Yeah. Is it an intimacy issue? <laughs> Fuck you. If, uh, if you don't feel comfortable. No, uh, it's not that. You know that we saved ourselves for marriage, Father. Well, now, now that we're married, we're having sexual issues. It's called Evil on Paramount. Never watch it, but search and found it. It's unbelievable the horror these people went through. God bless them all. I thought you are not allowed to park within 15 feet of a fire hydrant. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Oh my god, this is not okay. What just happened at Diddy's party just completely shook the world. Now in case you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Diddy's been facing crazy allegations. But in this video that I just found, damages Kanye West and Kim Kardashian's relationship even more to where now you think, what if their kids find this video? Now don't worry, I'm gonna show you guys. But as of for Diddy, he recently got arrested for allegations for sex trafficking. In the midst of that, they found countless tapes 
of what Diddy was doing at these parties, not including all of the guest stars that have appeared there, from the likes of Jay-Z and Beyonce, Blueface and Christina, Snoop Dogg and so on and so on. But in this video, they explain that they actually tried to drug Kanye so that when Kim and Diddy were doing their thing, he wouldn't be able to remember the situation. That's crazy. Ask them, how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly? It took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed about the amount, right? And I refused to take this, right? You understand that if I had taken the medication, I would not be here and it would have been, oh, whoa, was, he was deeply troubled. Let me know how you feel about this in the comment. So what you're looking at here is an MRI image of a 33-year-old patient who had over 12 cc is 12 syringes of hyaluronic acid filler injected to her face over the past six years. Now the area that is green is the hyaluronic acid filler. Now what's interesting here is that when we did volumetric analysis, that means when we measured the amount of filler, the amount of volume that was there, it ended up being close to 28 cc which is more than twice the amount of filler that was injected. And what this shows us is that hyaluronic acid fillers are hydrophilic. That means they love water and they also cause tissue expansion. So that's important to know. And over the next several videos, I'm going to explain what are the problems associated with these things? How do we treat them? And there, are, there is a lot of misconception about dissolving and we'll address some of those issues and concerns. So please stay tuned and follow for more. Has there been any research for long-term use and the impact on the body? Anyone? This is crazy. This guy literally just found evidence of the Bible outside of the Bible. Let's go ahead and play it. So here we are in the Egyptian museum. This is the Merneptah Stele. So on this side is the most famous name found in this entire inscription, which is right down here, the name Israel. It's agreed upon that this says Israel. And this is the earliest mention of the name Israel found outside of the Bible. The inscription of Merneptah dates to around 1210 BC. The inscription describes who Merneptah and his army fought with in Canaan. The translation reads, Canaan is plundered, Ashkelon is conquered, Gezer is seized, Yenoam is made non-existent, Israel is laid waste. Ashkelon, Gezer, and Yenoam are followed by the city-state symbol, these three city-states were ruled by kings. There is no city-state symbol shown for the name Israel. Instead, the symbol for a foreign people is shown. This means that in 1210 BC, Israel is described as a people that has not yet formed into a nation and therefore is without a king. According to biblical chronology, the date 1210 BC falls in the Judges period, where we find in the book of Judges this repeating phrase, in those days, Israel had no king. This is yet another example of the details in the Bible being verified through the details of an inscription dug up through archaeology. I don't need evidence to have faith in Jesus, but it's still incredible. I love how he politely adjusts his hands when you poke them. What? This car would become your avatar. It's like a creature in itself. This is the Vision AVTR by Mercedes. Take a look at this. It's actually got indicators on the tire itself. Never seen that before. You put your hand on this center console here and it reacts to your touch. It looks similar as the one on iRobot's movie, driven by Will Smith. If somebody is speaking poorly about you, this is a good sign. 
It means that the Creator has sent this person to take negativity from your soul. There is a spiritual law that says when somebody speaks badly about you, speaks behind your back, whether it's true or not, and is negatively affecting your reputation, as long as you accept it, you get excited about it, even if you have to fake that, and you learn to love it in that moment, it says that this person takes all of the negativity that was in your soul and takes it upon their soul. You actually transfer negativity, judgment, chaos that you were supposed to go through to them simply by not reacting to them, accepting that the situation came for your ultimate good, and even if you can, getting excited about it. They're doing the devil's work, folks. Stay positive. I know I'm going to sound crazy, but there's a demonic entity that's over downtown LA. I've lived in so many different cities as a psychic medium. And all night, all morning, all I hear are ravens crowing like it's a horror movie or an Edgar Allan Poe poem. They just go, caw, caw, like an ominous, demonic, horror movie-like sound. You know, normal neighborhoods, like when I lived in Utah or Maryland, you wake up to birds chirping. You wake up to cricket sounds. No, 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 no. In downtown LA, you wake up and go to bed with the sound of ravens cawing, like they're birds circling around a witch's castle, like it's out of a Disney movie. And then if you walk down here, so many homeless people, so much toxicity, I don't know what it is. I watch a YouTuber who walks around with a camera filming the streets of Hollywood in LA. It looks scary, man. I thought it was going to be glamorous, but I was wrong. There are too many homeless people and I can feel the darkness from here. I think the most interesting finding of the last decade in all of science, and this is that your muscles are basically an endocrine organ that secrete hormones into your bloodstream that affect every system of your body. And one of the first papers almost 10 years ago that was published explaining that when you contract your muscles, they literally secrete these proteins into your bloodstream that make you resilient to stress and can protect you from depression. The scientists called them hope molecules. This idea that your muscles are manufacturing antidepressant molecules, and the only way to get them into your bloodstream where they can then travel to your brain is you have to contract your muscles like that's it it's like a pharmacy in your muscles and anything you do that contracts them walking hiking running dancing weightlifting anything you are going to be dumping hope molecules into mm. your bloodstream that when they get to your brain they work as an antidepressant and they also help people recover from trauma that's like a miracle this is why you can feel good through your tiredness after physical activities. This floating city is falling apart and there's still two and a half thousand people living on it. It's called Nef Dishlari and it's a huge sprawling complex visible from space and is responsible for the extraction of tens of millions of barrels of oil. Over its 70 year lifespan, it had grown continuously to have a population of around 5,000. But when the Soviet Union fell, exposure to the global oil market really hurt the industry. And with the Soviet Union gone, money was no longer being pumped into expanding or maintaining the infrastructure. So out of the 350 kilometers of built causeways, bridges, and roads, only 35 kilometers remain usable today. But why do thousands of people still live here? Well, because their wages are a lot better here. Essentially, they're trying to make as much money as they can before they're forced to leave, as there are still active wells attached to this city. And it's thought to be more profitable to continue extracting than to try to maintain or expand the facilities. However, considering the rate of decay and the fact that many once active wells can't even be reached because the bridges connecting to them fell into the water, it won't be long before the entire city becomes unusable. This is crazy. It's the first time I've heard of this. It seems like it would make a great movie location. I believes that multiple serial killer truckers are currently on the loose, hunting for victims along American highways. Take a look at this map from the Highway Serial Killings Initiative database. The red dots show where remains have been found along highways over the past 30 years. Well, right now, the FBI believes at least 850 murders are linked to long haul truckers. We started noticing 
within our database a number of bodies along the side of the road, victims kept coming up as prostitutes, specifically truck stop prostitutes, and one after another our main suspects or confirmed offenders were identified as truck drivers. They're extremely difficult to track down and the mobility of their occupation allows them access to so many different areas of victim selection and then victim release locations. When Frank Figlusi, a former FBI assistant director for counterintelligence, heard the disturbing data, he realized that he needed to zero in. So he spent a year riding more than 2,000 miles in a semi to research the subculture and find answers. Well, that research culminated in his new book, Long Haul, Hunting the Highway Serial Killers. And he writes, quote, part cowboy, part fighter pilot, part hermit. Long haul truckers glide along the edge of a certain seam in the fabric of our society, the seam that separates their reality from ours. Killer truckers exploit that seam. Well, the book explores some notorious cases like that of Robert Ben Rhodes, the man known as the truck stop killer. He was finally busted in April of 1990 when a state trooper pulled him over in Arizona. But that trooper was not prepared for the shocking discovery he made. A woman chained inside of the truck's cab screaming, covered in red welts and lacerations with only slippers on her feet. A police soon learned that that man had built a torture chamber in the rear of the semi. It is possible he killed as many as 50 people. Coverage. This is terrifying. You'll never seen the movie Rest Stop. It came out on, uh, I think, 2006. Why do some Arabs look so white and don't seem to look stereotypically Arabic? When people think of a standard Arabic look, they're either thinking of either Bedouins in traditional clothing or Arabs from Gulf countries like Saudi Arabians or Emiratis. However, many are shocked when they see some Arabs who can look like this. Most of the time, Arabs with this phenotype come out of the Levant, and they can look like this because their DNA is different from Gulf Arabs. Arabs from the Levant mostly descend from ancient Levantines, who were their own people who were Semitic, but distinct from Arabs. Arabs from the Gulf are often mainly of Natufian hunter ancestry, which is between 50 and 70 percent in Gulf Arabs. Their second largest component is usually Iranian Neolithic farmer, between 20 and 30 percent. They have very low Anatolian farmer and Caucasian ancestry ancestry and often do not have any European hunter ancestry at all. Meanwhile, the largest ancestral component in Levantine Arabs is Anatolian farmer ancestry, which is between 35 and 50 percent. This component is shared with Europeans, as majority of Europeans are mostly of Anatolian farmer ancestry also. Levantine Arabs also have between 10 and 15 percent of Caucasus hunter ancestry, which is also present in Europeans in similar proportions, but is only between 2 and 5 percent in Gulf Arabs. This is why some Levantine Arabs can resemble Southern Europeans more than they would resemble Gulf Arabs. The dark side of housekeeping that nobody talks about, the paranormal activity, especially when you're working graveyard. I don't know if you guys know of Luxor Hotel, it's like this big black pyramid in Las Vegas. That's where I was my first job housekeeping. There's this weird background story of these construction workers that fell as they were building it. So I'm doing a room, I'm on the, I believe the 13th floor. That was a red flag right there. The number 13 is just infamous for being all kind of bad. I'm on the 13th floor and I'm doing my rooms and I'm, this is around like New Year's Eve. So it's packed, packed, but everybody's like, <laughs> it's Vegas. So it's nighttime, nightlife, everybody is doing their thing. Nobody's really in the rooms. Everybody's out and about, you know, just doing the Vegas thing. It's so quiet during graveyard. It's so fucking quiet. You can hear yourself breathing sometimes. Like if you can't hear the music or anything, you can hear yourself breathing. And I get chills when I still think about this. I hear this voice say, excuse me, ma'am. And I'm in the bathroom. So like the bathrooms are fairly close to the door. So I, we, when you're cleaning the rooms, you have your car parked in front of the door. So I come from the bathroom thinking that that person's right there because that's how close it sounds to me, thinking that they're right there by my cart. I go out to the cart, baby, there's nobody fucking there. There's nobody fucking there. So in my mind, I'm thinking like, maybe they were just like, it was just like a high buy kind of thing. I, I don't know, maybe they were drinking just, saw me like excuse me ma'am so i go back to cleaning 
and I'm cleaning out the sink this time, but I hear it again. Excuse me, ma'am. You know, like more of like a, excuse me, ma'am. Like, like, like trying to get past me or something. I hear it again. I look and it's fucking cold, like right in front of me, right in front of me. So I'm like, oh no, nah, this ain't that, bro. I didn't seen too much or too much in life. Like I'm not about to go out like this. I closed that door so quick. I got the fuck out of that room. I closed it, went on to the next room. Leave it for the next, like I'm done with this. I already was getting like a creepy weird ass vibe. Just And if you know, there are a lot of stories that people they see like silhouettes, black silhouettes. Sometimes people will see people running at them that aren't there. You'll hear things, things will move. That is just the very first instance. You guys like and comment if you want to hear more. That's why you need Jesus in your life. You are protected. I always cover myself and my loved ones with the blood of Christ first thing in the morning and before I go to bed. I can't take that to the bank. It's getting weird. Part infinity. First and foremost, the wherewithal for the photo op is what makes me wonder. <laughs> the photo's hard though. It's a dope photo, I ain't gonna hold you, it is. But it makes me wonder. Now, this other photo, many men wish death upon me, blood in my eyes, dark and I can't see. I'm trying to be what I'm destined to be, and niggas trying to take. <laughs> Relax. Everybody just relax. <laughs> the internet is quick, by the way. But listen, here's my actual thoughts about the whole situation. Okay, and I gotta be careful here because I don't wanna be reckless with my words. But I do gotta speak my mind. Because if I don't, my soul will be hurting sometimes. Listen, something about this just seemed, it seemed staged. I, listen, I know I'm not the only motherfucker feeling this. I know I'm not. Here's a couple things for me, bro. Like, when I saw it, I was like, dang, that's crazy. But then I was like, why is everybody just standing around? Why is everybody just standing around? Motherfuckers is barely ducking and shit. <laughs> the fuck? And then the, the, the Secret Service or whatever that let Donald Trump stand back up. The fuck? What the fuck going on? He stands back up to put his fist up, huh? He exposed himself again. How do we know that's the only shooter? What's going on? I'm not saying Donald Trump staged it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the way everything played out. You know what I'm saying? It's either that or he got somebody in his secret service that don't want him around. It's either that or his secret service people are just incompetent. And maybe he needs to just clear shit. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually not that surprised. And there's a lot of things that surprise me with my shit's getting weird series. Like a lady dropping a deuce on the grocery store floor crazy <laughs> i know a lot of y'all saw that video but this doesn't surprise me you know why because i've been talking about this stuff since like the very beginning of when i got on tiktok i don't talk about it as much anymore because i've just come to terms with what it is we're at a place right now with this whole identity politics this whole identity politics is, is having people lose who they are as people human beings they're just lost right they're so stuck in their ideology their political ideology that number one they're so biased and they can't see things for what they are. This is why I hang out in the middle. I be kicking it right damn smack dab in the middle. Because when you're in the middle, you don't have a team. You're not rooting for this like team, whether blue or red, and you can see things for what they actually are. Versus being so far on the left or so far on the right where you're just, you end up on top of a roof trying to shoot at the ex-president. It's crazy. It's not everybody, it's just some of y'all. Some of y'all just catch shit crazy, okay? And I always say this, identity politics is bad for the mental health. It really is. You better figure out a way to get more moderate, more in the middle. You better figure it out. But I'll end this video with this. A long time ago, somebody asked me like, hey, Gio, man, what do you think could be how people come together? Because for a while, I was trying to figure that out. I was like, man, how can we come together, bro? We got to figure out a way to come together, this, that, and the third. And I was spinning my wheels, and I was chasing, and then I figured it out. The only way human beings with different ideologies, different thought process, different viewpoints. The only way they come together, unfortunately, is through tragedy. And it sucks that that's the way human beings are, but that's just the way I've come to grips in terms with that. A lot of y'all don't want to come together until some horrible shit happens. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I think they stood him up because the bad guy was already taken out. 
I swear, the world seems like the Truman Show. Not all ideas will turn out to be correct. Most won't be. But to get to that point, you need to know things like what has everyone else said about this same t subject? Am I repeating someone else's work? Is this a new insight that no one else has had, but has foundations that are authentic or legitimate or objectively true? Am I making a false assumption? Am I making an assumption that someone else has already shown to be false? All of this goes on, on the frontier of science. Let me make it clear that I'm delighted when I see people with active minds trying to tackle the great unknowns in the universe. It's a beautiful thing that people want to participate on this frontier. What can happen is if you're a fan of a subject, let's say, a hobbyist, let's call it, it's possible to know enough about that subject to think you're right, but not enough about that subject to know that you're wrong. And so there's this sort of valley in there, a valley of false confidence. This has been studied by others, and it's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's the phenomenon where a little bit of knowledge, you overassess how much of that subject you actually know. And then when you learn even more, you realize, no, I didn't know as much as I thought I did. So then there's a sort of a lull there. And then when you learn even more, you come back up. Ultimately, learning enough to know whether you were right or wrong. To become an expert means you spend all this time. It doesn't happen overnight. You can't just sit in an armchair and say, I'm now an expert. It requires years and years of study, especially looking through journals where new ideas are published and contested. That's what we have learned is the most effective means of establishing that which is objectively true or determining that which is objectively false. Both of those work hand in hand to move the needle on our understanding of the universe. I'm gonna read you just my opening line here. It's titled one times one equals two. Okay. So I lead off. So that was the, that was, now if we go below that, um, what do we have? Is there, is that, uh, let's try that. Hi, Sir Arthur Eddington, an astrophysicist, provided the first experimental evidence for Einstein's general theory of relativity, which by the way, was published in a peer reviewed journal. Crazy idea. The platform to be accepted for the ideas is not social media. I don't get why Terence is so upset with what Neil says, but it's okay with when Eric says the same. The secret to math is all patterns. The secret to the secret of math is that the patterns never change. Hi, I'm Sarah. I've been a science and math teacher for 20 years. I like to make math fun, engaging, and not so scary for everybody. If you want more practice problems, more information, tutoring sessions, uh, click the link and do the stuff. No matter if you are talking about whole numbers, integers, which are just whole numbers that are negatives, or that can be negative. Fractions, decimals, variables, it doesn't change. The pattern doesn't change. If something is equivalent, like x equals four, then half of x equals half of four. Or if x equals one half, half of x still equals half of half. It doesn't change, the pattern never changes, so you use that to, to your advantage. If we get really comfortable when things are easy, when, when numbers are simple, we're gonna be just fine when, this, when the numbers get more complicated. If it doesn't fit the pattern, it's not the answer. Here's a nice example. Okay, proportions. Remember proportions, A over B equals C over D. So we've got proportions. These are these relationships between these different values. The re so the relationship between A and B is the same as the relationship between C and D. So if A is half of B, C is half of D. Now the other thing that's always true is that we've got the cross products are going to equal each other. So B times C is going to equal A times D. And again, that doesn't change. If we have, if A is one and B is two, C is three, D is six. So the relationship between each of these is the same thing. So one is half of two, three is half of six. Two times three is six, six times one is six. The pattern doesn't change. If I made one of these negative, if it were one 
over negative two, and it would have to be three over negative six. So then we would have negative six times one equals negative six, and negative two times three equals negative six. Again, doesn't change. It doesn't change anything, even if the numbers get really complex. So what if these were fractions? Everybody always gets thrown off by fractions. Remember, fractions are your friends. Sometimes they can be frenemies, but they are your friends. Decimals, same thing. The pattern doesn't change. So let's say this is 0 0.2 over 0 0.6, okay? So now we've got 0 0.2 times 3 is 0 0.6. Let's do uh, equals 1 over 3. I know this is a proportion because 0 0.2 times 3 gives me 0 0.6 and 1 times 3 gives me 3. I know these are proportional, but does the cross product still stay true? Well, let's just see. So one times 0 0.6 is 0 0.6. Three times 0 0.2 is 0 0.6. The pattern doesn't change. That's mathed up. I used to love math when I was a kid. I wish I had her as my math teacher growing up. I would have been on a different trajectory by now. I was reading the Bible, bro. Paul was captured. And the way that people were just blown away by this man being so willingly to go with them. And he went there and he would sing and the chains broke off of them. This kid came up to me that same day I was reading the Bible. And he said, what I love about you the most is you do not care what the consequences of you speaking about Jesus, but you do. And I did it because I love Jesus so much, I don't care about the consequence. But when he saw that in his eyes, he saw a man who doesn't fear the consequence. And so what I've learned, I understand the term of forgiving your enemies and showing them nothing but love is because say you came and just hurt me and I'm like, don't worry about it, I forgive you. And I move on and you see by my actions, I truly don't care. And I moved on. You'll be so curious on how could he forgive me this quick? Wow. Why does it not bother him? How is he so full of love and peace and joy? And that's because I rest with Christ. So there's nothing a man could do to me. If God is for me, then who could be against me? You cannot rip Jesus away from me. I rest with Christ. When you walk with God, you find him in everything you do. I get there and from day one, it was just horrible. I had a bad feeling. I knew what, what hotel I had to go to. There's a Swiss hotel with a um, casino on the first floor. So I'm sitting at the casino at one of the machines playing that has a view to the front entrance of my hotel, which is across the street, because I had a bad feeling. So I'm sitting there playing, but I'm also watching the door. I walk across the street, and when I walk in into reception, the young lady that was always there wasn't there, but there was a different guy there. He looks at me, and he says, Mr. Castro? For some reason, like, I'm like the hairs on the back of my, my neck stood up and I just looked at him and was like, yes. He's like, your friend is over there waiting for you. I was like, oh, okay, thank you. And I turned around and there's this guy over there and he stands up. So I'm like, hey, what's up, buddy? Like, if we're old friends right. and we know each other, you know, because we're old friends. So I walk up to him, give him a hug. And when I hug him, I immediately smell that he smells like death. You know, in, in our business, we don't walk around smelling like death. We're right. always, you know, nice and clean, you know, cologne on, cream, whatever. But this guy smelled horrible. So that was like red flag number one. So I back up from him, you know, I look at him. So we sit down on the couch right there, right by the front entrance to the lobby. And we're talking. So I'm like, how are you? How is everything going? And I'm looking around. Got a bunch of people around me. We're talking. He's like, listen, I'm going to leave you the bag. And I'm going to go back to my hotel and go take a shower because the trip was crazy. I was on a bus for like 40 hours. So I'm like, all right. In my head, I'm like, all right. So this is why, you know, he's starting forever. to make sense. He's starting to make sense. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go upstairs. I was like, listen, just go do your thing. Come back and we'll go out tonight. He had this like little um, kangaroo, like man purse yeah. with the drugs in it. So he puts it there on the, on the, on the couch and I pick it up and go to leave, go to, go to leave. And bam, everybody that was around me, DEA, Interpol, undercover police officers, everybody just grabs me. Always trust the hair standing up. A twist in your gut and distrust anyone who smells like death. Have you ever known a homeless person who will not accept money or food from anyone? Can I like give you something? I can't accept anything. My question is why can't I give you anything? Because God told me not to accept anything from anyone. But I got love for you, so can I give you something? I can't accept anything. No. Nah, because just no, no, you're not how you gonna eat? I eat every day. I got food right here, bro. This is what happens. Let me explain to you. Right? Talk to me. If I accept from you, right? Yeah. I have to accept from every single person. Yeah. What happens? I'm going to have thousands and thousands of dollars, right? Yeah. Listen to this, though. Yeah. What happens is the whole journey is going to change. There's no longer going to be a faith. Yeah. 
It's gonna be comfortability. It's gonna be searching you shall find. Well, can I buy you something? I can accept anything from you, my brother. For one, God told me not to accept anything can from you. Can I give you a hug? Yeah. Thank you. I gotta give you something. I love you, brother. His faith is beautiful. God bless him. Y'all need to listen very closely on what he just said. We're going to go to South Korea. We're going to get the chip boot. What are you doing? Let me play that again and watch his eyes again. Listen very closely if you didn't hear it. We're going to go to South Korea. We're going to get the chip boot. What are you doing? I'm going to get Japan and Korea back together again after no so that's a little alarming to me, especially with how wide his eyes were and when he goes, what are you doing? And he changed to another subject. Also, another thing that I can't play on here, he talked about the project, you know, that's supposed to be happening uh, next year, so to say. Now, tonight's speech was very interesting because it dealt with a lot of good questions, but it made a lot of people feel that these were set up questions to trying to get him to step down. He was asked several times about it, and he constantly reminded everybody that he was going to be continuing in the race. What's your thoughts on what you heard earlier? Take care. God bless. When he said, what are you doing? There was definitely someone in an earpiece or someone mounting to him. Like, I ain't never experienced nothing like this. So as we driving back to base, I swear I seen a face in the rearview mirror. This creepy video is going viral right now, and it comes from TikTok user Japri. I'll tag him below. And after recently becoming an EMT, him and his partner are driving down the road when he sees a face in the rearview mirror. Feeling creeped out, they quickly pull over, and that's when he begins to record. That is, until he summons up the courage to go back to the ambulance and get the key so they can get out of there. And this is what happens. Take a look. He drops his phone in a panic after a loud bang can be heard coming from the back. After a few moments, he grabs his phone, but what happens next is truly terrifying. I don't know if you see it, but can, can y'all see that back door? Like, is it... Like it just flew open, like. Can you? Oh. Nah, what the? F what was that? Can y'all see it? Nah, hell no. Nah. Fuck that. Nah. Hey, at least we know it's not AI. You all don't see the ring bouncing around in there? The quality of this video was very bad, and the audio was very difficult to hear. So I remastered the audio and tried to clean up the visuals a bit, because some of the information you're about to see has never been seen before. Symbols are powerful, did you know that? Especially to the occultist, symbols are very powerful. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about words and symbols. I want to talk to you about dates and all kinds of mysterious things uh, like that. I want to qualify some of this uh, in a moment. This is something for which I've been interviewed by U.S. congressmen, including Congressman Bob Ney, by U.S. senators, including U.S. Senator Rod Grams, by the History Channel, by dozens of radio and television shows, and even by members of the 33rd Degree Free Council themselves, and they have not refuted one time. Uh, I also believe that these forces can be powerful. Do you believe that we war against occultic forces? And do you believe that they also sometimes can be powerful? They can be persuasive. Timothy gives us that example uh, where Moses with, withstood by the 
uh, Egyptian magicians, Janus and Jambres. And Moses is sent by God to go and stand before Pharaoh, and he takes a rod with him. And he, and he gives him uh, miracles to support uh, God's demand that he let his people go. And if he doesn't, this plague or that plague is going to happen. And yet here are these magicians in ancient Egypt who can mimic most of the miracles that are performed by God at the hand of Moses. They can be very powerful. We also learn in Revelation 13 that when the Antichrist and the beast appear, they will have the power to call fire down from out of heaven at their command. Occultic forces are in the world. They can be very powerful. And here is the mystery. They also seem to know something about times and dispensations. And that is quite a mystery. The example I give there is where Jesus went into the valley of Gadara. And uh, the wild men of Gadara come running up out of the caves. These demoniacs come running out of the cave and they say to Jesus, What have we to do with thee, Jesus? The world is influenced by Satan. He uses music, symbols, television, and even that black portal mirror called your cell phone to deceive you. Different day, all demons. This is probably top five nasty I've ever heard a guy do, bro. It was this guy named Sean Hirschbein. This happened in West Virginia. So, dude, this guy, kind of like a, a hippie kind of dude, and he was pretty much homeless at the time. But he had this bus, like a big yellow bus, like a school bus, and pretty much he was driving around in it, and that's how he would get from point A to point mm -hmm. B. I don't know how he even obtained these animals, because he has a lot of them, bro. Like, he has, like, chickens, um, It's like farm animals. Animals, yeah, yeah, like chickens, ducks. He has dogs, horses, a pony, goats. Uh, donkey, like he Damn. had hellish bro, right? And so at first, nobody was really paying any mind to this dude until one day, bro, this guy, he decides to get all the animals, puts them in the bus, bro, and he starts having with all the animals, Mike. All of them? All of them. And the story does not stop there. He starts to send videos of him having with a pony to underage kids. What the Yes, this is real. I cannot make this up. Police don't know about this yet. The guy's still traveling around. Police ended up getting notified because one of the kids ended up snitching to their parents. Like, uh... This grown-ass man is sending me some crazy Yeah, like, his bus ends up breaking down in Pennsylvania. They end up tracking him down. These end up getting run and they arrest him. When they find out and they bust the whole operation, um, these people that are part of, like, this association for, like, animals and rescuing them and They ended up rescuing the animals and getting them out of there, but they had to, like, euthanize a bunch of them. Really? Yes. Because they were f***ed up and sh Yeah, yeah. Super oh, crazy. Yeah. yeah, bro. So Brian ended up getting arrested. What a f psycho, dude. I didn't know, bro. Yeah, I did not believe this. A whole bus full. Bus full of animals, bro. Yes. They are there. You just can't see them till they want you to see them. I was able to see the ones in the daytime. It was about the 11 o'clock. I was sitting on the ramp. I was just looking at the sky. We have that awning, barely blocked the sun, and I started seeing them. Anybody who's gone out and be able to do the spiritual work, you start attracting them. I could see up high by the sun. I was like, oh, that's weird. It was one, two, three. And then I started seeing shapes that looked like a bird flapping its wings. Yeah. Right up by the sun, but way up yeah. high, coming yeah. out from the sun. And I was like, holy crap portals opening up in the sky. What if you are the portal? You are the one who believes it just enough and ask for help and want to know that, that our angels are out there, that we're going to be okay. I was sitting next to a coworker. I was like, do you see this? What? What? Block the sun and look. Yeah. What is that? And then they start popping in because you called upon them and you asked them. They allow you to see them because you want to. The elites have those crafts underground and CGI in the sky. Blue Beam Project. Today I'm going to show you the most disturbing horror movie in the world. The thing that is so scary about this horror movie is none of it is fake. This picture contains a list of the most disturbing horror movies in the world, and as you can see up here, we have the easy ones. But we're going to be focusing on the list down here, more importantly, OG Rish Collection. The OG Rish Collection is a movie that is basically a compilation of the most disturbing things that are on the internet, period. In the early 2000s, there was a website called ogrish.com that was basically a shock site. If you don't know what a shock website is, basically it's a website that shocks you by showing you the most horrible things on the internet. From terrorist attacks to cartel videos, I mean, I think you get the point. But this movie really focuses on real life events such as accidents, murders, you know what else. And basically this movie is meant to challenge people to see if you can make it till the end. 
While I was researching all of this, the movies down here in like these catalogs, they're calling them a shockumentary. I forgot to mention, um, there's six movies of them and I'm just looking at the covers of them. Don't watch these videos. 50,000 likes and I'll watch a movie of your choice and I'll give you my honest reaction to it. So make sure to like and follow. I think I watched this online. It starts with a man getting his throat cut, but they took it down. James Yu or James Wu? Is that guy whose house blew up? The story is that he was like shooting flares in front of his house. Like it was in a neighborhood. Cops show up, they drive the SWAT car through his wall and there's a video of it. The house blows up and they're like, he died. And then he comes on comments and stuff. And he's like, I'm not dead. What? He said, they're trying to kill me. Who? So what? apparently he was head of security for CFIUS. Committee of Foreign Investment in the United States. They're trying to like delete all of his information off uh, interwebs. He was like making claims of like, they've already killed my mother. They've killed my sister. They're trying to kill me. Why are we blowing up houses though? They're not even being discreet about it now. They're just blowing That's up houses. That one that blew up and it like blew up the other house too next to it. Mm -hmm. And like a bunch of people died. Yeah. They said it was because of the water heater. Get real. No. To level a house because of a water heater? Yeah, because everybody checks the pressure gauge on their water heater. Yeah, every day. Yeah. We don't do that. What? You I don't? Check it every day. No. You Lily, your, your house is in danger if we don't do that. You've never checked the pressure on your water heater. No. I check it literally you, every day. No, what do you, you do? Yes, I do. When you Lil? walk past it, you just walk Whenever past it. Whenever I'm going it. in and getting water, I check it. Lily. Nobody so, does you that. Have so no, we don't check, we check it. <laughs> James Yu or James Sue? Now he's James Who. So this photo has been circulating the web and it's said to be proof of time travel. A time traveler said that they went back in time and took this picture of people building the pyramids. Obviously, there is ongoing debate on how the pyramids were actually built. Because back in the day, they didn't have modern tools, so were they actually carrying it like this? Is this a real photo? Other people believe that it was aliens that made the pyramids. I don't know. But what do you guys think? Is this time travel real? Is it AI? What is it? I don't... I don't know anymore. Honestly, even if this was real proof of time travel with AI, like... Are you kidding? And you can't time travel yet, but you don't have an HD camera. Have any of you heard about what happened to this truck driver in Monterrey? If no, let me fill you in. So this happened in Saltillo, Monterrey, and this truck driver was driving the truck like he always does in the middle of the night. I'm scared already. <laughs> So the people who work and monitor the cameras um, reached out to like their management because they were like, was he approved to have somebody in the truck with him? As you can see, there is a woman next to him. So they all check and they're like, no, he is not approved to have a woman or anybody with him while he's driving. So because of that, they try to reach out to the man, but the communication is not going through. Now at this point, the people who are working the security and watching notice that this lady, this is how she remains the entire time time her mouth is open they say she's wearing like an older style dress and she looks terrified meanwhile he just looks like he's driving the trailer no big deal so the guy wasn't traveling far he was actually traveling to base where all the people who are watching the cameras are at and when he gets there the security people were like why did you have a person in there with you and he's like i didn't and they were like well come look so they bring him in show him the recording of this lady being like so close to him so the guy claims that there was nobody in the trailer with him but they do admit that they've heard stories about la muerte like the dead lady getting on trailers with men who are driving in the middle of the night so this is what they think happened what do you guys think uh, i will never be driving a trailer in the middle of the night well actually i can barely even drive a tiny car <laughs> of course i'm gonna give you a close-up she looks like her mouth is wide open just staring at him almost like waiting for him to look at her or maybe she's terrified of something i don't know but can you imagine driving and you happen to glance at the passenger seat and see this lady with her mouth open like that, I would have died on the spot. Supposedly, truck drivers have a tradition that the passenger seat should never be empty for this purpose. Scary. This kid's cartoon tried to warn us all. Hey, let's get some ice cream. Ingredients, zinc trisodium aspartate, sorbitol and bisulfate, 
oxide, beta carotene, lactic acid, carabine. Great A milk emulsified, maltodextrin alkalide, silicon dioxalite, lots of sugar, hey, all right. calcified synthetic salt, artificial barley malt, glycerin and aspartate, folic acid. That tastes great. Smart of sodium glutamate, dehydrated calcinate, soybean oil, butter, butter, butter fat, fat caramel sensor, I'll eat that. Hooray for sugar, cause we love it. Chocolate chips, we want more love and cakes and ice cream. Want to shove it down our throats real fast. Mm. Here's a candy bar, you tried it? Hey, let's all see what's inside it. Gelatin, yeah, nitroglycerin, phosphate, soybean, lecithin, deoxalite, trisilicon, dipped in chocolate. Bring it on! Citrus enzymes, BHT, powdered milk. Sounds good to me. Baking soda, carob gum, carbohydrate. Yummy, yummy, yum. yum. Monosodium glutamate, zinc disodium alginate, whole grain flour, yeast, and fat. Time to eat it. I'll do that. <laughs> we like sweets a lot, so give us all you got. And we'll stuff them in our bodies till they make our insides rot. You stick poison fluoride toothpaste in your mouth and in your children's mouth. So why not see how much poison you can take before you win? Yo, y'all take a look at this. Look at what this lady filmed in the mountains of California. So the sun is rising, right? The sun has yet to rise. And she looks up and she sees this thing, this red object in the middle of the clouds. But the sun hasn't even risen yet. This is at 5 a.m. in California. Look at this, y'all. What is that? This is in California. I remember this from a couple of days ago, right? This is in California as well. And now you have this going on, y'all. And then all the distractions that's going on in the world right now pertaining to a certain somebody. All I got to say is, let's get this shift. I already know what to do, y'all. Please follow me on all these other platforms in order to keep up with my content. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift. Peace in. It looks like the moon to me. Let's talk about some of the craziest things people confess to before passing part nine. This is Theodore John Conrad. He was a bank teller at the Society National Bank headquarters in Cleveland. On July 11th of 1969, he walks into the vault, steals $215,000, puts it in a paper bag, then walks out with it. In today's times, that's worth over $1.5 million. This happened on a Friday, and the loss wasn't discovered until the following Monday, meaning he had a two-day head start on police. He first goes to D.C., then L.A., then settles in Massachusetts as Thomas Randall. By 1982, he's married and has a daughter. After this theft, he went on to live a pretty law-abiding life, leading police on a search that lasted 52 years, appearing on America's Most Wanted and Unsolved Mysteries. He passes on May 18th of 2021 from lung cancer. He ended up confessing to his daughter who he really was in March of that year on his way to his first chemotherapy session. Police only find him through his obituary, and by then, it's obviously too late, and he's not charged, nor is his family. Next up, there was a nurse who was caring for a war vet, and he witnessed many things, one of them being watching his brother be unalived by enemy fire. Or that was the story that he told everyone, and before he passed, he confessed to this nurse that he was the one who took his brother's life, and then he stole his identity. He stole his brother's tags, then went on to live his brother's life, even going back to live with his brother's wife, and any personality differences, everyone took it as just war trauma. I wonder if that's what the movie Brothers is, is based on. Why are you tired? Because you have low blood oxygen. If you have anemia, you're tired all the time. If you have anemia, why can't you sleep? Because when you lay down to go to bed at night and you start to fall asleep and your respiration rate starts to fall, your blood oxygen starts to fall. As your blood oxygen falls and it gets to a certain level, your brain panics and wakes you up by pulsing cortisol. So if you look at somebody that's really exhausted during the day when they sleep, they'll look like a bouncing rubber ball going down the hallway. And the reason why they look like a bouncing rubber ball and they can't get into a deep sleep is because their brain is trying to save their life and is keeping them from a deep sleep. And often they'll go to their doctor and they'll take some really powerful sleep medication or a tranquilizing or a sedative and they'll wake up the next morning and go, man, I hate taking Tylenol PM because it's, you know, it's still in my system the next day. It's actually not in your system the next day. That drug's been out of your system for hours. You're feeling the effects of having suffocated for six hours because you blindfolded the brain from being able to see your level of blood oxygen so it didn't wake you up. So how do we fix this he just talking and don't provide the solution now I never 
I never ever try to make things about race. However, my fellow white folk, what is this? How does one win at this game? What is this even called? Is all I'm asking. It, it's just a question. Please don't be offended. Because my folk, we, we don't, I don't know what this is. Respectfully, of course. <laughs> Sensational. I don't know, but I'm scared for the judges if she doesn't win. When I look at this picture, even to this day, this still makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. So this is a real photo that was taken by Daylin Poi in 2015 at the infamous Stairway to Heaven. Now, if you're not a tourist or you've never been here, you may not know that these are restricted. It's very dangerous. You're not allowed to hike there. But Daylin did, and he did so alone. So while he was up there, he ended up texting a few pictures to his grandma, and then he never came back. So then the investigators, the people who were searching for him, they said, we want to see those pictures, and they found something that stuck out to them. But before we take a look at the enhanced photo, if the unsolved is something that you're interested in, go take a listen to Creep Time, the podcast. In the background of that original photo that I showed you, he had captured something that looks like a man crouching down in the distance. And I tried to sort of mark out how most people see this figure, but even to this day, the mystery of where Dalen went persists. It always just looked like he was taking a poop to me. Did you guys hear about, there was a video of, they set up like a fake luxury store, it was called like Papelli, and all they had was Payless shoes in there, like $20 shoes. But they named it Papelli, put a little asterisk on there, had $800, $900 price tags on these $20 shoes, and people were coming in, lining up to pay $800 for some shoes that cost $20. Branding. If you can brand your business, if you can brand yourself, you can sell anything to anyone at any time. It goes to show just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's good. And just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's bad. I, rem I remember this uh, like three years ago. Guys, this is a complete new start, complete new life. I'm currently at the airport in France and I just uh, packed like two luggages, uh, 48 kilos of personal stuff and uh, yeah, this is the end. I'm leaving France like definitely, definitely or definitively, I'm still looking for my words anyway. Um, currently working, no time to waste if you want to develop your business and if you want to work from anywhere in the world you just have to put in the work so this is exactly what i've been doing for the past eight months i clarified all my projects all the things i want to achieve in my life all the goals i have i definitely and now i have a very clear vision of what i want to achieve of uh, which type of environment i want to involve in and uh, definitely trying to get better in English because it's still not that because I hang out with too many uh, French people I think that's definitely not very good for my English accent and vocabulary but anyways it's gonna get better I'm gonna be here and if you see any mistake or errors I can make when I speak in English here please put it in the comments so I can get better into speaking in English. So it's time to say goodbye to France and uh, see you in the next adventure because you're not ready for what's gonna happen. Some of them come to Bali. In some area, we look like the minority, nothing but white people. I'm not complaining though. They actually bring up our local economy. But when you come here, don't overdo it because we still have that penalty and castration. If you messed up, you go home with no balls. All right, folks, I'm going to end our video with this coming clip. Be kind to each other. If you haven't subscribed, please do. There's a free gift below if you like. And if you want to buy me a coffee or support me through Patreon, the links are also in the description below. Thank you for watching. Have a prosper day. And God bless. What is going on? Hey, boy, I need you to go outside and pick all those apples off that tree, you hear? Or we gonna be tussling. Well, we just gonna be tussling. What did you just say to me? I ain't gonna pick no apples. It's, it's summertime, man. You know how hot it is outside? They say it's supposed to be in the hundreds. You don't know nothing about what the weather say. Because I don't even know how to read it. Now, you get out there, you pick them apples off that tree. 
like I said, man, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, you know, look, these, these bugs is bad, man. When I go outside, I get ate up. So I, I, I ain't, I ain't going up on no tree. And who is you? Uh, I see you trying to be smart. You trying to be smart. That's what. No, I'm not trying to be smart. I asked you a simple question, and you can give me an answer. Let's see if I crack this whip on you. Let's see if that'll make you make you remember who I am. Crack the whip. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like you don't. You don't get out there right now. Next time, I'm gonna aim for your face, and I'm gonna call my boys in here to finish you. Well, I mean, is the is the apple tree far? Do I gotta walk? Or y'all gonna take me over there? No, you're going to walk until your feet give out. And then when you fall to the ground, you're going to get up and you're going to walk again. And you're going to get up and walk again. And you're going to get up and walk again. 